Half a century after this aircraft first flew, it's still in production. It's been hailed by some aviation enthusiasts as one of the most outstanding aircraft to take to the skies. Surprisingly, in this age of jets, this most capable aircraft is propeller driven. Not one part of this latest version is from the original model. This is the story of one very interesting aircraft. The C-130's name is Hercules, and the word relates to the mythical Greek hero who was renowned for his great strength. Like Hercules the myth, the C-130 has become a legend in aviation. More than 2200 C-130's have been built, and they're flown by more than 60 nations worldwide in more than 70 variations. This is the latest J model C-130 on its first test flight during the late 1990s. The C-130J Hercules is the newest generation of tactical military transport aircraft. It incorporates an integrated digital avionics suite with head-up displays, new propulsion system and other major systems upgrades that reduce operating costs and crew size while offering significant performance improvements. During September 1998, the C-130J received FAA certification. FAA regulations are among the most rigorous in the world, requiring an aircraft to perform safely in a variety of conditions. Some of the tests reflect normal operating conditions and procedures that would occur during regular operations. Other tests are very harsh, such as this test in extreme heat and sand. Lockheed used a total of nine C-130s to complete the test series of flights which totaled more than 4,100 flight hours from a variety of locations. It may be true that there are larger transport planes such as the Russian-built Antonov-124. The Antonov Design Bureau also built other giants but it's the 124 that had the most impact on the general public. This is an Antonov AN-124 being put through its paces in a low-level flight routine at a recent air show. Around 50 124s have been built. About 21 are in military service and approximately 30 are in civilian service. The AN-124 has been a commercial success for the Russians as it has an unequaled cargo lift capacity and today it carries outsized cargoes worldwide. 
Another outstanding transport aircraft is, like the Hercules, from the Lockheed stable of famous planes. The C-5A is a high wing design with 25 degree sweep. It has four jet engines in pods on under wing pylons, a rear loading ramp, a high T-tail and the main landing gear retracts into fairings. It can lift two main battle tanks or transport 345 fully equipped troops. The Galaxy was the largest operational aircraft in the world for 15 years, until it was surpassed by the Soviet Antonov AN-124 Condor. When speaking of transport aircraft, the Airbus Beluga has to be mentioned, as it has recently entered the market for outsized cargo. This aircraft is the most voluminous transport aircraft in the world. The Beluga was built by Airbus for Airbus as it was designed primarily to transport components of their commercial aircraft to the various factories to be assembled. The main difference between the Airbus and Antonov and the C-5 is that the Airbus is not a military plane. The Hercules may not be as large as these giants, it may not be able to carry the payload of the mammoth-sized transporters, but it is more versatile. It requires minimum runway length, and it's a most tough and rugged aircraft. There are very few aircraft that have been able to accomplish all the many and varied missions that has been asked of the Hercules. It carries troops, vehicles, and armaments into battle. It can also drop paratroopers and supplies from the sky. It can serve as an airborne or ground-based refueling station. Throughout its history, the C-130 has also been used on a huge scale for emergency evacuation and humanitarian relief. It's even recovered space capsules and worn one-ton skis in Antarctica. The Hercules has survived the toughest flights, the roughest landings and the constant pounding of heavy cargo. One of the most outstanding performances the C-130 has achieved occurred in October 1963. The US Navy landed a Hercules on an aircraft carrier. This was achieved in moderately rough seas 500 miles out in the North Atlantic off the coast of Boston. In so doing, the aeroplane became the largest and heaviest aircraft to ever land on an aircraft carrier. This record still stands to this day. The plane's wingspan cleared the Forrestal's flight deck island by just under 15 feet. The initial production model was the C-130A. It had four Allison T-56A11 or nine turboprops. The original studies were conducted during 1951 and the first prototype flew in 1954. The first production flight followed on April 7, 1955. A total of 219 were ordered and the C-130A joined the US Air Force inventory in December 1956. The C-130B used the upgraded Allison T-56A7 turboprops. The original three-bladed propellers were replaced by four-bladed units. The first of 134 entered Air Force service in April-June 1959. The B model carried additional fuel in the wings and had strengthened landing gear. Another development that found its way into the later E model was the fitting of two jet engines to the aircraft to shorten the takeoff distance. This Lockheed control model made its way into the air within 400 feet. The E model had a vast payload and increased range. In fact, it could cross the Atlantic Ocean non-stop. More and more was being asked of the Hercules and the runways it was required to use were very substandard and often very short.
Lockheed fitted JATO or Jet Assisted Takeoff to the E model, and this reduced takeoff from 1,500 feet to about 800 feet. Vietnam really proved what a great aircraft Lockheed had produced. An example of the C-130's abilities can be found in the history of the Marine base at Khe San. In early 1968, the communists surrounded the Marine base. This footage demonstrates the amount of action that occurred right around the perimeter of the base. As a consequence, the base became completely shut off by the communist forces. The Marines desperately depended upon U.S. Air Force and U.S. Marine Corps C-130s to maintain a supply line. The preferred method of delivery was to drop the supplies from the air to reduce the chance of the C-130 coming under fire. Sometimes the weather conditions prevented visual airdrops, so Marines radar-guided C-130s to the general runway area. Only then could the aircrew visually fly to the designated drop zone. The drop zone was a mere 300 square foot area, and the C-130 crews successfully dropped up to 200 tons of supply a day into this small area. When the weather was clearer, the C-130s were constantly under fire during landings and takeoffs. Although a lot of drop-offs could be of the container delivery type, the C-130s crews often placed themselves in danger by landing for the purpose of medi evacuations. During the Vietnam War, the C-130 was also used very effectively as a bomber. Converting the Hercules to a bomber required only a few slight modifications, primarily the addition of radio reception capabilities to the loadmaster's interphone station in the cargo compartment. The C-130 loadmaster would actually release the load an operation that gave them the distinction of being the only enlisted men in the Air Force to release an aerial weapon. The bombs were delivered using modified heavy drop techniques with a ground radar operator in an MSQ-77 radar site providing guidance to the crew to position the aeroplane over the release point. Not only did the impact zone become enemy free, the cleared area could be used by helicopters to ferry in troops. These clearings were very safe for the troops as everything within a mile of the blast was either killed or temporarily incapacitated by the explosion. The C-130 bombers had a reputation for accuracy exceeding that of all other aeroplanes dropping bombs during the Vietnam War. Because the delivery of the large weapons required no modification to the C-130, a crew could drop two bombs in the morning, then spend the remainder of their day shuttling into a nearby forward airfield delivering ammunition, fuel or other supplies for the troops. These duties demonstrated the versatility of the C-130 as they were bombers in the morning and transports in the afternoon. Another adoption of the C-130 was the Spectre. This is still today a very powerful weapon. This is the first gunship delivered to the United States Air Force. It carries more gun firepower than any other fighter or bomber and its role is that of close air support. It was born from Vietnam. However, it has currently been used in the Gulf War, Afghanistan, and the recent Iraq conflict. It has a crew of 14, which includes five gunners. The armament of this plane consists of two 7.6 millimeter miniguns, Bofa cannons, and 20 millimeter Vulcan cannons. With all six guns blazing, the Spectre can deliver 17,000 rounds per minute. There's a hit, 
It's night capable and each of the crew has very specific jobs which include locating targets, tracking targets and actually bringing the guns online and to bear the enemy. Later model gunships also have much more effective radar jamming equipment and other electronic warfare devices to defeat detection. It would be unfair to paint the C-130 as an aircraft that has only excelled in military use. The Hercules has also been there to assist the victims of many world and national disasters. In this instance, it's bringing in food and medical supplies to the starving. The C-130 has been used in more varied situations than perhaps any other aircraft. This is a Hercules catching a returning satellite in mid-air. It was fitted with special rigging and an array of hooks and winches. Here is another example of a novel use for a Hercules. The system is used to pick up downed pilots, retrieve special forces and perhaps even pick up special agents or classified material that's been gathered in the field. The system requires the use of a special recovery suit, which takes about 20 minutes to don. This is usually dropped to the ground crew on a prior run. Once final checks are complete, a ground member releases a helium-filled balloon, which has attached to it the actual pickup line. The C-130 crew is informed that all systems are go and the pickup is then completed. Aircraft inbound at this time. This is Antarctica, cold, harsh and very unforgiving. With a set of very large skis, the C-130 Hercules made this place quite a bit safer for researchers and scientists that have to call this place home for extended periods. This is not the first time a plane has visited this iced over area, but it is the first plane that's capable of assisting in emergencies and resupplying the scientific outposts on a regular basis. Several A models, redesignated C-130D, were modified with wheel ski landing gear for service in the Arctic and for resupply missions to units along the distant early warning line. The two main skis are 20 feet long, 6 feet wide and weigh about 2,000 pounds each. The nose ski is 10 feet long and 6 foot wide. The D model also has increased fuel capacity and provision for jet assisted takeoff. The Hercules' generous payload and short landing and takeoff abilities made this the plane of choice when scientists needed to get to places that were previously unreachable. In Alaska, the same places and skills were used to keep the oil industry supplied in that frozen environment. The C-130 also hauled materials for the construction of the Alaskan oil pipeline. The early Hercules has achieved some extraordinary feats. Today, the J model is the latest C-130. shape, however this is misleading. Today's shape is but a silhouette of its heritage. The J model is actually a totally new aeroplane with a whole new level of performance.
compared to the earlier production C-130E, maximum speed is up 21% and climb time is down 50%. With new engines and new propellers, the J can reach 28,000 feet in 14 minutes. It also offers reduced manpower requirements and lower operating support and life cycle costs. The new propulsion system consists of four powerful Rolls-Royce A2100 D3 engines, which generate 29% more thrust than the earlier model. It's also 15% more fuel efficient than the previous models. An all composite six blade Doughty Aerospace R391 propeller system is lighter in weight and has fewer moving parts than any preceding Hercules propellers. One record was recently gained when a Lockheed Martin flight crew flying a production standard C-130J Hercules carried a 34,000 pound payload non-stop from Pope Air Force Base, North Carolina, to Cambridge Airport, England, the crew set two world aeronautical records during the flight. The new records, set in the unlimited and turboprop categories, were both previously unclaimed and offer speed over a recognized course. The records are important as they demonstrate the speeds, altitudes and payload the J model can achieve in an operational situation. The C-130J is currently being built to meet mission requirements for combat delivery, aerial refueling, weather reconnaissance, search and rescue and electronic combat. The C-130J is available with a 40-foot cargo compartment, while the new C-130J-30 comes with a longer 55-foot cargo compartment that carries space for 30% more cargo or 40% more personnel. We end this episode with some stunning images of one of the world's most incredible aircraft, the Lockheed C-130 Hercules. Join us again on our next search through our brief but fascinating history of flight and aviation. Come with us and meet the people, the planes and the companies that have created the world's most technologically advanced machines.